Currently, I'm teaching a course on introduction to proof writing, and we've been working with binomial coefficients recently. And throughout this class, I've been reminded of two nice strategies for proving identities involving binomial coefficients, either using binomial expansion or by using a combinatorial argument, which makes it seem like you're counting without counting. So I thought we'd look at the following identity two ways, and then also maybe do a bonus identity at the end. So we'll prove that the sum as k goes from 0 to n of k times the binomial coefficient n choose k is equal to n times 2 to the n minus 1. And we'll use the following two facts, which are equivalent definitions of binomial coefficients. First is that n choose k is the number of k element subsets of an n element set. And second is that 1 plus x to the n expands as the sum as k goes from 0 to n of n choose k x to the k. So notice there's no closed form in sight here. And what I mean by closed form, the formula that looks like n factorial over k factorial times n minus k factorial. We won't use that at all. So let's look at our first method, which will be using binomial expansion formula. So let's start with our left-hand side over here. We have the sum as k goes from 0 to n of k times the binomial coefficient n choose k. But let's notice that we can write this as the limit as x goes to 1 of the sum as k goes from 0 to n of k times n choose k times x to the k minus 1. Now notice that this is just a polynomial here, so taking a limit is really just evaluation, but I think the cleanest way to write it down is by adding this limit in here. Okay, so now what I want to notice is that I've got this number k here and this exponent k minus 1 here in the exponent of x, and I chose that exponent of x for a reason, and that's because that looks a lot like the derivative. So let's rewrite this as the limit as x goes to 1 of the sum as k goes from 0 up to n of n choose k times the derivative with respect to x of x to the k. Great. So just to reiterate, this k times x to the k minus 1 turned into this derivative of x to the k. Now from here, since the derivative is a linear operator and we have a finite sum here, I can just bring it out of the finite sum. So that gives me the limit as x goes to 1 of the derivative with respect to x. And then inside of that will be the sum as k goes from 0 to n of n choose k times x to the k. But now we can use our second definition for the binomial coefficients over here that they occur in the expansion of 1 plus x to the n. So this equals the limit as x goes to 1 of the derivative with respect to x of 1 plus x to the n. But now we can use the chain rule there. That'll leave us with the limit as x goes to 1 of n times 1 plus x to the n minus 1. But that pretty clearly gives us n times 2 to the n minus 1. That's because 1 plus 1 is 2. That's really as simple as it is. I want to look at a combinatorial argument that uses our first definition for binomial coefficients. So we'll consider ordered pairs of the following form. So there'll be x comma a, where x is an element of the set containing 1, 2, up to n. a is a subset of the set containing 1 up to n. And finally, x is an element of a. Great. So one example of an ordered pair like this would be maybe 1 comma 1, 3, 5. So that would most be, definitely be an example of an ordered pair because 1, 3, 5 is, at 5 is a subset of the set containing 1 through n given that n is large enough. And then 1 is an element of that subset. So what's a non-example of a ordered pair that we would be looking at here? Well, maybe something like this. 2, comma, 1, 3, 5. So that is not an allowed ordered pair, and that's because 2 is not an element of this subset, so we would not allow this. And now the game will be to count the number of such ordered pairs two different ways. So let's maybe put here that we're counting the number of ordered 
pairs. I'll just say X comma A, and they follow those rules which we have above. So let's maybe put a box around this. And we'll count this two different ways depending on the order at which we choose X or A. Okay, so let's use the multiplicative principle to notice that this should be equal to the following product. So let's maybe note that there are N choices for X. So number of choices for our number X from the set containing one to N. And then after we've chosen that X, we need to fill out the rest of the subset. So this would be number of subsets of, maybe we'll write it as one, two, up to N minus X. Great. So just to reiterate what's going on here, we're taking our number X first, and then we're filling out the rest of our subset A so that it contains X. But since it contains X already, we only get to choose N minus one elements to put inside that subset. So that's why we're taking subsets from one, two, up to N minus X, so not including X. Okay, so now how many choices are there for X? There are definitely N choices for X. And then how many choices are there for subsets here? We'll notice that this is just the number of subsets of an n minus one element set, but that's known to be two to the n minus one. Okay, so we've counted the number of ordered pairs one way and we got this object here, which notice that's the right hand side of our equality. And before we move on to the next side, let's point out what really made this work over here. This was what we achieved by choosing X first. So choosing X first. So let's see what we'll get if we choose A first. So in other, we, in other words, we choose the subset first. So let's notice we can choose zero element subsets, one element subsets, two element subsets, so on and so forth. And all of those choices are disjoint, so we can use the additive principle. Okay, so let's look at our first choice, which would be the number of zero element subsets. So subsets. And then, then after that, we'll have number of choices for X from this zero element subset. I'll just put box here to mean this zero element subset that we just chose right there. And what would happen next? So next we would have the number of one element subsets, and then we would multiply that by the number of ways to choose X from this one element subset. Again, I'll just put a box there to mean from that one element subset. And then let's put plus dot, dot, dot. Let's put something in the middle. So let's see, say in the middle, it will be the number of K element subsets. So number K element subsets. And then after we've chosen that K element subset, we can choose an element from that K element subset. So number of ways to choose X from that K element subset. And then we're gonna go all the way to the end. So at the end, we'll have the number of N element subsets. And then after we've chosen our N element subset, we'll have the number of ways to choose a single element from that N element subset. So number of ways to choose, and I'll keep the notation X in box to mean X from that N element subset. Okay, but now we can count each of those fairly easily. So how many zero element subsets are there? Well, there's one, or more generally, there's N choose zero. So that's by our definition over here. And then after we've chosen a zero element subset, how many ways can we choose an element from that zero element subset? Well, there are zero ways because there are no elements inside that subset. So that would be these two boxes. And then moving down, the number of one element subsets, well, that'll be in choose one by our definition over here. And then once we've chosen a one element subset, how many ways can we take an element from that one element subset? Well, only one way because there's only one um, element to choose and then plus dot, 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 all the way up to this middle, 
How many k element subsets are there? Well, there are definitely n choose k. That's the definition of our binomial coefficient. And once we've chosen a k element subset, how many ways can we pull an element out of that subset? Well, exactly k ways. So we've got k and then plus dot dot dot. How many ways can we choose an n element subset? Well, that will be n choose n. And then how many ways can we take an element from that n element subset? Well, there are exactly n. Great. But now let's see. This, just to reiterate kind of what we did over here, is what happens if we choose A first. So let's point out that out. So choose A first. So depending on if you choose X first or if you choose A first, you should get the same number, but you get different versions of the same number. But if we were to write that out in summation notation, we would grab right back onto our identity over here. Okay, so now I'm going to leave you with a similar identity, maybe for a little bit of a homework exercise. Okay, so here's a really similar problem for you to try yourself. So if you're really psyched, you could try to prove this two different ways, just like we did in the video. And that is to show that the sum as k goes from 0 up to n of k times k minus 1 times n choose k is equal to n times n minus 1 times 2 to the n minus 2. But then that begs, could we generalize this to something larger? Maybe that would be another thing to try on your own. And that's a good place to stop. Thanks for watching and sticking around until the end of the video. And since you're here, don't forget to gently press that like button. Subscribe, ring the bell, and select all notifications to never miss a video. If you want to get your name in the credits like you see here, access the live seminar series, review videos before release, and more, go to patreon.com slash michaelpenmath and become a Patreon member today. If you want full ad-free course content, subscribe to my second channel, Math Major. I've got courses on linear algebra, complex analysis, and proof writing, among several others. And that's everything. Bye.